next topic is genetics. First thing we have with genetics is DNA. DNA is found in the nucleus. Here's another one of those times where you want to make sure you understand the vocabulary. The nucleus is referring to the organelle. Again, sometimes the organelle will be referred to as the structure. Now, DNA is composed of genes. A common picture that you might see looks something like this. Now, that there, that represents a chromosome. On top of that chromosome, sometimes you'll see little bars or little lines. Those individual bars or lines, those represent the genes. And if we were to put these in order, let's say the nucleus, the genes, and the chromosome, from, we'll say, most numerous to least, this is the order that we would put them in. The most numerous is going to be genes. The reason for that is because we have approximately 20,000 genes. The next numerous is going to be chromosomes. That's because we have a total of 46 chromosomes. After that, it's going to be nuclei. And the reason for that is because for each cell, we only have one nuclei. The next part goes over A, C, C, and G. Remember that phrase we learned, those all teachers go crazy? Well, that phrase, all teachers go crazy, is supposed to help us remember which letters go with which. So if you had something like, it, let's say, this, where you're trying to match up the correct pair, A would go with T, C would go with A, C, G, G would go with C, A, T, A, G, G, C. So those base pairing rules are going to be really important. You need to make sure that you memorize those. Now, if we're looking at the diagram to the right, you will see that that actually is giving you what DNA looks like. Do you remember what that's called when DNA is a twisted ladder? Well, that twisted ladder structure is called a double helix. Now, each one of the little building blocks of DNA, if you were to look here, each one of those are called a nucleotide. A nucleotide has a base, a sugar, and then a phosphate. And once again, looking at the diagram, this is also showing you which ones would pair up with which. So if you have A, A would pair up with T. If you had G, it would pair up with C. And then T would pair up with A. Now our next stop in genetics is going to be what is a mutation. A mutation is simply a change in the genetic code. It's a mistake. Looking at the diagram, you will see that in this replication of DNA, there actually is a mistake. What you'd want to do is you'd want to also number these. One, two, three, four, five, and so on until you got to the end. If I compare each one to the first one, both of them have A. That's correct. Then both of them have T. Then both of them have a C. After that, though, there actually is a mistake. You'll notice in the original, for number four, there's a C. But in the replicated version, there's a G. Right there, that's a mistake. What has happened to the C? Well, the C has been deleted. This would be an example of deletion. Now, what causes mutation? Anything that is a mutagenic agent. That's the fancy words we like to use. Sometimes you just need to use your context cues clues in order to help you. Mutagenic kind of looks like mutation. What are some examples of things that can cause mutations? They can include things like radiation, drugs, cigarettes, the sun, chemicals. After you have a handle on DNA, the next thing that we need to talk about is going to be protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is going to be responsible for making you you. The diagram on the right does a good job of summing it up. It talks about the DNA base sequence, then the amino acid sequence, protein shape, protein function, trait. 
that has consistently been on the regions for the last several years. So I'd make sure that you know that graphic and that order. Let's get back over to the notes. If you look at messenger RNA, messenger RNA is made inside of the nucleus. Remember, originally DNA is inside of the nucleus. DNA is very, very big. Since it's so big, it can't get out of the nucleus. It needs to be transcribed or copied into messenger RNA, which is smaller. From the messenger RNA, oh, sorry, messenger RNA is going to be able to leave the nucleus. And it goes to the structure known as the ribosome. Well, another thing you should note is that messenger RNA is slightly different. One difference is that instead of having that T that we looked at before, now it has a U. Also, it's a single helix. That's why it's so much smaller. All right, back to protein synthesis. Protein synthesis occurs in the ribosome. Once again, the ribosome is an example of an organelle. Vocabulary people many times make mistakes here. The last thing you need to know about protein synthesis is kind of the bigger picture, which is represented in that graphic on the right-hand side. We say the genetic code, which is our letters, our base sequence, is going to be determining the sequence of amino acids. Now remember, our building blocks of protein are amino acids. And when you string those together, those amino acids, then you get the shape that determines the function, which determines traits. Shape is very, very important for proteins. If you change the shape, then you've changed the function. That's why mutations are such a big deal. If you change the genetic code, you change the shape, and now it's no longer work properly. The last idea when we're looking at genes is going to be gene expression. We talked a little bit about this when we did reproduction. Gene expression is influenced by the environment. What does that mean? Well, if you have two identical twins, even though they live relatively similar lives when they're younger, as they age, they start to do different things. And the environment, therefore, influences them differently. Maybe one twin smokes, the other one exercises and does not smoke. And because of that, as they get older, they have more and more differences even though they have the same exact genetic information. So this next bullet point, this is talking once again about that term differentiation. Differentiation is saying that every single cell in your body has the same exact gene. Remember, they all came from a zygote. They all came from sperm and egg coming together, making a zygote. And then each one of those cells divided into more and more cells, and eventually they made you. So all of your cells have the same exact genes inside of them. Why do they do different things? Well, they do different things because if you look at your DNA, it's an instruction manual. It has all the instructions. But if we're looking at just one specific type of cell, it doesn't read the whole manual. It's like the assembly line worker that just does one thing. So if you're looking at your liver cell, your liver cell only reads that one section. It doesn't care that a little bit down the way, you know, that's your heart cell. It doesn't care that if you go a little bit further down, that's in charge of your eye color. If you're a liver cell, the only part that's turned on or activated, those are big words that they like to use, so the only part that's going to be turned on is going to be the section that is the liver cell. The rest of them, the heart cell section, the eye color section, everything else, those are all off. You can think about them like a light switch. So the other light switch is off, off, off. The only one that's turned on is actually the liver cell. 